Sir Alex Ferguson called him a very rude word. He's been investigated for transfer irregularities. Last year, he bought Al Capone's villa in Miami. He was a millionaire aged 19 after buying and then selling a McDonald's franchise. But most importantly, Carmine Mino Raiola is one of the most powerful men in football. Agent to Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Paul Pogba, Romelu Lukaku and Gianluigi Donnarumma, Raiola guides the careers of some of the biggest stars in the game. A brash character who encourages the same in his clients and has players on his books worth a total north of £300 million. But how did this man, who used to work in his family's pizzeria, an outsider in the football business who prefers shorts and a t-shirt to a suit, become so influential? Riola was born in 1967 in Nocera Inferiore, a small town about 20 kilometres outside of Naples. When he was just a year old, his family moved to Harlem in the Netherlands, where they opened their first restaurant. When Riola was 11, he started helping out in the restaurant, washing dishes and waiting tables. Eventually, he became an integral part of the family business. By the time he was a teenager, he was already negotiating deals with banks for the business and eventually started a company, Intermezzo, who would help Italian firms in the Netherlands. It was around this time he made his first fortune, selling that branch of McDonald's to a property developer. He also briefly played for the youth team of his local club, FC Harlem, but it was soon recognised that his talents lay off the pitch. He became the club's sporting director, but despite a typically ambitious plan to sign a young Dennis Bergkamp, he soon fell out with the Harlem board and instead began to work with an agency called Sports Promotions. He became more and more involved with the football business, initially as an interpreter to help with Bergkamp's move to Inter, then facilitating moves for Dutch players to Italy, including Wim Jonk and Brian Roy. In the mid-1990s, he formed his own company and signed up Pavel Nedved at that point playing for Sparta Prague and after an impressive performance at Euro 96, sold the winger to Lazio. It was after brokering Nedved's subsequent transfer to Juventus that Riola's reputation really began to grow. In 2001, he met the player who would make him a household name, arriving at a posh Amsterdam restaurant in a night t-shirt where he persuaded Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who was dressed in a sharp suit, to let him guide his career. At that meeting, Raiola provided statistics telling the young striker that he was far behind his contemporaries and instructed him to sell all your cars and watches. Ibrahimovic compared him to a character from The Sopranos. Do you want to be the best in the world or the player who earns the most money and can show off the most stuff? Raiola asked Ibrahimovic. The Swede chose the first option. Raiola added more players to his portfolio. Ibrahimovic's mate Maxwell... Henrik Mkhitaryan, Lukaku, Pogba and Mario Balotelli. It's probably the last two that have brought him the most notoriety. To give an indication of how much his players lean on him, Balotelli once called Raiola to tell him that his house was on fire. Raiola suggested he call the fire brigade instead. When Raiola began working with Pogba, at that stage a promising but unpolished midfielder coming through at Manchester United, he demanded an improved contract for his player. I distrusted him from the moment I met him, said Alex Ferguson. He and I were like oil and water. Ferguson called him a twat, refused to grant the improved terms, and Pogba left for Juventus. When United bought him back in 2016, Raiola earned a reported £41 million in fees and commission from all three parties involved. It was with this money that he bought the Capone house. For all the brashness, it's clear that Raiola serves his clients well, or perhaps we shouldn't call them clients. He's extremely loyal to the people who are in his inner circle, and that means his players, a Dutch journalist and friend of Raiola once said. To him, they are like family, and that's why he is the perfect negotiator, because you always want to do the best for your family.